Hey everyone, this is part two of building a serverless web crawler on AWS. In this video, I wanted to give you a demonstration of the application in action. And yeah, so I wanted to show you all the resources in the AWS account and then show you how this thing runs and then what the result looks like. And then in a later section, I'll walk you through the code and just give you some implementation tips as well. So just as a really quick reminder, um, here is the AWS architecture of this application. Now I did already make a video on this whole architecture and just talking about it in some detail. So I'll leave part one down below. But as a quick little recap, how this web crawler is going to work is that me as the user, it starts with step one, I'm going to submit a root URL. The root URL is basically just the starting point of our crawl. So I submit that root URL to our initiator function. And this initiator function is basically responsible for, for starting the process of the crawl. So it initially saves the root URL into a Dynamo table. This is our visited URLs table. And then it on queues that root URL for processing. That's connected to an SQS queue like you can see here. I have another Lambda function that does the majority of the actual crawling work. Uh, so that's connected to the queue. And when it receives a message, it's going to contain the URL that needs to be crawled to see if it has any links that have not yet been discovered. So it's going to use the beautiful soup library to uh, query the uh, web page that's contained within the message of the SQS content. It's going to extract out all the HTML and extract all the links from the HTML content. So we're going to have a list of URLs. Then it's going to query the Dynamo table to see if any of the URLs have already been visited because we don't want to double visit. We only want to visit a URL once. So it's going to pull all those results back into the Lambda function, do a diff of what is on this page and what it's already visited and what remains are the URLs that we need to further submit for later processing. So essentially, if uh, on a web page we have 10 URLs that are discovered, we're going to query Dynamo for all 10. Say we only get eight back, that means that two of the 10 have not yet been visited and therefore need to be submitted for a further crawl. So that's in general how this architecture works. Now I kind of want to walk you through the different components here. So first tab, this is our uh, initiator function. This is responsible for starting the whole process. Um, you can see here in our test event that, yeah, we just have a root URL here that I'm going to be submitting. I can change this to whatever I want. And at a later point in time, I may uh, attach this to some kind of API so that I can submit these um, kind of requests a little bit more dynamically and maybe attach it to a front end as well, but that's a later step. Uh, so that's this part here. And then we have, um, actually I'll show you in order of the architecture. So we have our Dynamo table over here. Uh, so it's a visited URLs table. Currently there's nothing in it, but um, you'll see what the schema looks like when we run through the example. And then we have a queue, it's just called the crawler queue. You can see it has zero messages available. And this is just our DL queue to handle any failures. And then this Lambda function over here, this is the one that actually does the work. So the one that uh, will query the website, it'll attract the content, and then uh, kind of save records into Dynamo and on queue new jobs into the queue. So you see that it is attached to a queue as the event source. And if we click on that, we can see it's attached to the crawler like you see here. So what I want to do now is take you into the initiator and actually give this a test run to show you what happens as this uh, thing kind of works its way through all the different links. So when I click on the test event, what's going to occur is that we're going to immediately start seeing messages in our SQS queue as new links start to get discovered. And if we go back to our Dynamo table after the run, we should be able to do a scan operation here and we'll start to see records of all the different links that we've discovered so far and how they're connected to the root domain. So that's what we're going to expect from running this uh, kind of crawl. And I don't think what I'm doing here is, um, you know, problematic or illegal or anything like that, uh, since I am running this on my own website anyways, but I'm just going to restrict this to my own website right now because I don't know if I'm doing anything that's breaking any rules. So just to be safe, um, yeah, I own this domain, so not a big problem. So let's test this thing out. So I'm just going to click on the test event and I'm going to bring you into our queue right after I do that so we can start to see the messages get processed. So clicked on test now. That worked correctly. And uh, yeah, there's some metadata here in the logs. We have the visited URL, we have the run ID, we have a timestamp, a bunch of other stuff. We'll get into the schema a little bit later, but let's go into our queue now and start taking a look at the messages being processed. 
So if I just click on refresh here, yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of messages that are available. These are all targets that need to be crawled or links that need to be crawled. And so if I keep on refreshing this, you should see um, this message will go up and down, by the way, because as new links are submitted, we're going to go out and call, you know, make a get request to that link. And it may discover more links that need to be discovered uh, or crawled. So this number will go up and down, but we'll know when we're done, when this is uh, staying at zero. And it looks like it's still processing here. So we'll give this a moment or so. I've also throttled this as well, so it only ever does more than, or not more than like two or three invocations at once, uh, so that you don't like DDoS a website. So let's go into Dynamo now and start looking here. So if I click on run, you can already see there's quite a few URLs that are already discovered. Um, and these are some of the ones that uh, that it has figured out so far. So we have this URL, we have book reviews, we have all these different tags, categories, all this different kind of stuff. And if I keep on clicking on run every so often, you see the number change. Now it's 188 URLs that are linked to this domain. If I click it again, it'll probably be higher because it's figuring out more. Yeah, so now it's 194. So this will continue to grow until it uh, discovers all the URLs that are associated with this. So let me um, kind of just talk about the schema here. So we have the visited URL, which is the primary key. That's just the URL that we have visited so far. Then I created something called the run ID. The run ID is, um, it's a timestamp separated by a pound and then a UUID. And the reason I did this is because um, I want to potentially crawl my website more than once. And by the way, this is the sort key. So uh, yeah, or the range key, sometimes it's also called. But anyways, I sometimes wanna crawl my website more than once, and I may want to search through the crawls based on timestamp. So for example, give me um, all the crawls that reference this URL and sort them by most recent timestamp. You can do that by using this format because we're using a lexicographically sorted um, time field here. And then having the run ID afterwards just gives us additional context. I'll probably separate the run ID out into another field afterwards and add an index on it so that I can search for all the URLs that are discovered by a particular run ID. But for now, this is totally fine. Then we just have the root URL. So for a run ID, like for a particular run ID, the root URL is always going to be the same. It's the same for all records, like you can see here. Um, this is just our starting point. So for one run ID, the starting point is always the same. So that's why it's duplicated in every record here. And then we have our source URL. Now the source URL is pretty interesting. The source URL is where this visited URL was directed from. So this URL, if, if you go to this URL, um, if you, and if you extract all the HTML content, it will contain this URL, which is like something about SQS and SNS. So that's what the source URL represents. It's basically where this URL, where's the, where the visited URL was pointed to from. So this one came from the root domain, so did this one and this one, but uh, this record here, like this third one, uh, came from the tag SQL source URL. So if I were to bet, I would say that this link is somehow related to SQL. Uh, there you go, it is related to SQL. So the tagging system is working correctly. One thing to note as well is that um, there can be, like if you think about the structure of the web page, there can be multiple different websites that point to the same URL. In fact, I would expect that to be true. So it's a directed cyclical graph. However, in my implementation, because I don't want to double visit web pages, I only want to visit them once. Um, you're only going to have the source, the first source URL that um, kind of it discovers. So if this web page is referenced by 10 other web pages, we're only going to have one record for this web page. And it's going to be, and the source URL is going to be the first run or the first. Um, I guess you call crawl that discovered the source URL. I hope that made sense, but you know, that's the idea here. Anyways, uh, if we go back into our queue now, hopefully this will be done. And yeah, so you see the messages are, are no longer available. So if we just refresh this a few times, we can sanity test. Oh, no, see, I was wrong. And this is the problem with this architecture and just uh, web crawling in general. How do you know when you're done? You don't really know when you're done, right? Because there's no real endpoint unless you do some kind of, I guess, two-step process where first you kind of crawl through all the domains and then add them to a list. Actually, I don't even know. Maybe someone has an idea in the comments. How can you know when a web crawl is done? Um, 
maybe there's like some research documentation on this, but you know, this is the problem with this architecture. You don't really know when it's finished. So if I refresh this a few times, um, yeah, so I, I think it's finally done now. So if we go into DynamoDB, we see the final records here. Uh, looks like our website has 284 connected URLs to it. So yeah, that's what this application does. And in uh, the next part, I'm probably gonna walk you through the code to give you an idea of what is actually happening behind the scenes in terms of the implementation. So I'll put part, uh, I guess it'll be part three over on the right-hand side here when it's available. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know down in the comments section. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.